Hello, good morning. Welcome to the internship presentations for our Adobe Digital Media Academy and the Engineering and Design Academy. Thank you for coming and letting our students share their work with you. My name is Mrs. Murray. I'm the Academy Coordinator, and I am new to the role this year. I have already been so impressed with these students in front of you that are getting ready to present. Their skills and professionalism that they are learning as a part of the Academy is outstanding. So I'm excited for them to share with you. Um, they've created um, some dynamic projects for their companies. They have completed internships in a variety of settings, um, and they have done a great job. So I need to thank their internship hosts. I don't think we have any in here right now. But um, their internship hosts, this would not be possible without them, for welcoming them into their place of employment, giving them a valuable work-based learning experience, their teachers for preparing them for the internship, and Mrs. House for supervising their internship over the summer. So I'm excited for you all to get to see the work that they have done. I know you will be impressed by their skills and abilities, just like I have been. Enjoy the presentations. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Autumn Harris. I was a Lady Cardinal through the Department of Administration. In there, I was assigned to be a communications intern for the Department of Information Technology. So a little bit about the Lady Cardinals is that it is a program for juniors and senior girls around different high schools in North Carolina to learn STEM-related careers or just to learn state government throughout departments of North Carolina. So for my job sites, I was at the Department of Administration on Wednesdays and Thursdays, and on Monday, Tuesdays, and Fridays, I was at the Department of Information Technology, but I spent most of my time at the General Assembly with the legislative liaison, Monica Fuller. So for a little bit about the Department of Information Technology is that it delivers and maintains cybersecurity, and it protects the data of North Carolina residents and departments. They also run multiple Carolina programs such as 911 Board and Broadband. A little bit about the Department of Administration is that it oversees all of the government all the government operations, and they house many of the state advocacy programs and state services. So these are my lovely supervisors. On the left, you'll see Ms. Candace Dudley Settle. She was with DOA. And on the right is Ms. Nicole Meister. She was with the DIT. So experience that I have gained is definitely career advice. Despite what career I choose into, this advice will help me in multiple ways. I also learned state government and how different North Carolina departments work and operate. And I also learned how professional dress is very important, despite what you go into. I also networked and made amazing friendships with all the other Lady Cardinals. And I met different state senators and representatives at my time at the General Assembly. So a day I work at, NC, at, at DIT is I would do social media feedback with their Twitter, Facebook, and their almost Instagram page. I also interviewed their CIO, Mr. James Weaver, and their communications director, my supervisor, Nicole Meister. They also assigned different employees for me to shadow so I can learn different career opportunities that they, op that they allow at DIT. And at the DOA, I would work on a sustainability project for the building of Archdale, which is that really tall tan building in downtown Raleigh. And me and my group were, uh, were assigned to create outreach and education so we can teach the employees of Archdale how to be more sustainable in the workplace. On every Wednesday, we'd have chat and choose with different department leaders and learn about their departments and how they operate. And on Thursdays, we would tour these departments and see how they flow. On, and mostly, we would visit the governor's mansion to a, for an internship reception and to give our final presentation on sustainability. So my project proposal was to Ms. Candace to ask her if I could redesign their Lady Cardinal logo, and she was over the moon about it, and she just said, uh, free of range. But she did like to see the colors blue, red and green. So these are my drawings. I decided to go with a little bit more of the cardinal aspect. So on the top, you can see that I placed the wing of the cardinal and the year that the next logo would be made and a little dogwood so it could bring out the lady and lady cardinal. And I used this aspect in most of my colors, but on the second, on the second drawing, you can see that I incorporated the state of North Carolina. Miss Candace decided to go with my third option and then I made these drafts digital. I used my pen tool and illustrator to make the Lady Cardinal in different layers. And I grouped them all together to make that one aspect of the Cardinal. I then made different dogwoods and grouped them together to give it a little flowery look on each corner of the pen design. 
So for my future career goals, I plan to study criminology at one of these three colleges, Howard University, the University of American, uh, Maryland, and South Carolina. Doing so, I wish to accomplish so much with this, with this career, and I really think it would be best for me. I also want to say thank you to all of my supervisors and academy coordinators. I could not have done this without them, and I had an amazing summer. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Allie Hancock and today I'll be telling you about my time with Be Your Problem Solver Services. For this internship, I was given the ability to work from home, however, I was also able to come into the office to work, which was located at Fuquay Workspace. These are my bosses, Kate and Corey, and they run Be Your Problem Solver Services. They are counselors as well as small business owners and they also have a large following on social media. I mainly reported to Kate, However, I was also able to interact with Corey at meetings and events. The overall project that I decided to take on was to run the Instagram account. For this, I was to make a post for every day of the week. Mondays and Wednesdays typically varied depending on what was going on within the company. For instance, when their summer series was going on, these days were specifically geared towards promoting that event. However, once it ended, Mondays were for facts and statistics relating to the theme of the company, and Wednesdays were for promoting the free resources on their website. Tuesdays and Thursdays were for their podcast posts. On Tuesdays, I would highlight the newest podcast and what it was about, and on Thursdays, I would post a reminder to go listen to the podcast. Lastly, Friday takeaways were posts of positivity at the end of the week. I was even given my own post called Ali's Perspective, where I would talk about the challenges I was facing, as well as the positives going on in my life. Some of my other responsibilities included creating Pinterest pins, TikToks and Instagram Reels, and helping out with events. For Pinterest, I would promote the newest podcast on Tuesdays and the Media Mindfulness course on Thursdays. I also made a variety of TikToks and Instagram Reels, as well as a few videos for the company. And finally, over the summer, Kay and Corey hosted a leadership academy. For this, I would take photos and videos of the sessions, help out with some of the activities, and I would get to interact with some of the members and speakers. A typical day on the job started with me researching what it was I wanted to create. I would then plan what each post would look like, create the post, and finally upload it to Metricool, our scheduling website, where I would sign up a date and time to be posted. The Digital Media Academy greatly prepared me for this internship. I felt more professional and confident in the workplace, especially when speaking in front of a large audience at events. The projects given to me in the Academy also helped me to become more efficient with my time management skills, which transferred over to my internship where I was able to get each post uploaded on time. I also was able to make each design visually appealing with proper spacing, color scheme, relation to the target audience, and more. And finally, my knowledge of the Creative Cloud and other Adobe products helped me to better adapt to the websites my company used, such as Canva and other sources. Overall, this internship gave me so much real-world experience. I learned to meet deadlines, I had more responsibility put on me, and I was able to partake in many workplace experiences, such as meetings and events. I was also able to improve many of my skills, such as my writing, I produced numerous graphics and videos, and I got out of my comfort zone a little bit with some of the posts I created and some of the events I attended. I want to finish off my presentation with how this internship has developed my future career goals. I learned the things that I do and I don't want in a career. While I did enjoy the creative freedom I had throughout the internship and the flexibility I received by working from home, I lacked a lot of in-person interaction and the ability to move around. I learned that I don't want to work from home or be stuck at a desk all day. I want to be able to interact with other people and really be challenged in the job that I choose. I originally thought I'd want a career in the digital field. However, I found that while I really enjoyed the work I'm doing, it wasn't fulfilling all of my needs. I was worried that I wouldn't find a career I was passionate about the way I enjoyed digital media. However, I found that I really love science. I plan to go to NC State majoring in human biology and minoring in exercise science so that one day I could become an orthopedic PA or something relating to sports medicine. Once again, I'm Allie Hancock, and thank you so much for listening to my presentation. I'd like to thank my academy advisors and teachers for allowing me to even have an internship like this, and I'd like to thank my bosses, Kate and Corey, for trusting me and allowing me this amazing opportunity. Thank you so much. Are there any questions? Okay. Hello. My
My name is Caitlin Stratemeyer, and this is the presentation of my summer internship experience. Over the past few months, I completed my internship at Carolina Kids Pediatrics, a pediatric office located in Raleigh. For my internship, I was responsible for creating marketing and advertisement content for the practice. I chose to intern at Carolina Kids because it allowed me to combine both of the fields I'm interested in going into, medicine and graphic design. I was able to complete most of my internship work from home as I was using Adobe softwares that didn't require to meet me to go into an office. I did occasionally go in person to meet with my internship supervisor and to provide general help around the office. This is my internship supervisor, Rebecca Eeks. She's the office manager at Carolina Kids. She was extremely helpful and professional throughout the entire process. Communicating with her was easy, as she always responded to my emails quickly, providing me with feedback and corrections on my projects. I definitely gained a lot from working in such a professional environment. As my internship progressed, I improved at professionalism, communication, and time management. The added pressure of creating deliverables that would be used in a real business made the process a bit different than working on projects in class, but this pushed me to create the best work I possibly could. This opportunity also allowed me to get an inside look of what it would be like to work in the graphic design field. The only reason I was able to complete my internship in the first place was because, all this, it was because of all the skills I've gained these last few years in classes as an Adobe Digital Media Academy student. We learned to use Adobe softwares like Adobe InDesign and Illustrator, which were the two I mainly used for my internship. We also do group projects that give us real-world experiences where I learned the importance of soft skills like communication, time management, taking constructive criticism, and professionalism with a client. These are some examples of the work I did for Carolina Kids. I created business cards for the physicians currently working there and two welcome flyers for new physicians that were going to be joining the practice too. These flyers were distributed to nearby hospitals to encourage new parents to consider Carolina Kids when choosing a pediatrician for their new baby. I also designed a brochure for Carolina Kids that goes along with the beachy theme of their office. After completing the work I needed to do for my internship supervisor, I came up with my own project that I wanted to do. September is Pediatric Cancer Awareness Month, so I decided I wanted to design a pin that could be given out to patients throughout the month of September. I started the process by creating a rough sketch, and once I liked the idea, I moved into Adobe Illustrator where the design was eventually finalized. This is what the final design looked like on a pin, and Carolina Kids ordered a large number of these and they were displayed in the office throughout the month of September. They, the display had a poster next to it that explained that September is Pediatric Cancer Awareness Month, which not everyone might know, and that donations are accepted but definitely not required, and all donations would be given to UNC Chapel Hills Children's Hospital. I'm definitely still undecided on what I want to do for a career, but my experience at Carolina Kids definitely solidified both my interest in the graphic design and the medical field. I really enjoyed my internship experience and a big thank you to everyone at Carolina Kids. Thank you for your time and attention. Do you have any questions? Hello. My name is Paige Wynn, and this summer, I was given the opportunity to work at Lucky Jefferson as a literary illustration intern. Lucky Jefferson is a nonprofit literary journal that aims to focus on the modern reader. They publish writers of all backgrounds so that they are able to share their experiences with a broader audience. They have 10 issues so far, with new issues coming out quarterly. Nabila Washington is the editor-in-chief of Lucky Jefferson, and she also acted as my internship supervisor. She answered any questions I had, gave me helpful project advice, and gave me amazing advice throughout the entire internship. I would like to thank Nabila Washington for being a wonderful internship supervisor throughout this entire process. My internship was conducted fully online, so the main forms of communications I used were Zoom and email. The other interns and I used Discord to communicate, and there we would critique each other's art and got to meet each other. And I found this very interesting because I got to meet people who are interested in the same career path as I was. I had many responsibilities throughout my internship. For the first three weeks of my internship, I learned about all of the different aspects of literary illustration. And then I put my skills to the test and created a new illustration every week. 
Each of these is based off of a poem or was a promotional material used for their website. I also spent a good portion of my internship working on Lucky Jefferson's new podcast, The LJ Pod. I used Adobe Premiere Pro to edit all of the video footage and audio tracks. I then went into Adobe After Effects to create an animated intro that you can see here. I learned many new video editing techniques and animation techniques that I will be able to use for future projects and my future career. For my main project, my internship supervisor and I decided that I would create the layout for a student-led magazine called Paradox. The theme of Paradox is absurdism, which means something so bizarre that it is hardly able to be understood. So to, to start this process, I created a mood board. On this mood board, I put any images of inspiration, color scheme ideas, layout options, and font choices for the titles and the paragraphs. And after close deliberation with my internship supervisor and a few draft options, we came up with this. This layout features a strong, bold font on the left side to showcase the artist's name and their bio on the top. And depending on how many pieces that the artist submitted, their art took up one to four full pages. And on the left, you can see the cover for the magazine. I learned many new video editing skills, animation skills, and layout skills that I was all able to do because of my time in the Adobe Digital Media classes. My future career plans are to attend a four-year art institution and study concept and development for animated TV shows and movies. I would like to thank my internship supervisor, the academy teachers, and, and Ms. House for being so helpful throughout this experience. Thank you so much for watching. Are there any questions? Hi, my name is Isabella Haddon, and for my internship, I worked at NC State's Delta IMP. Now, you may be wondering what these two acronyms stand for. Delta stands for Distance Education and Learning Technology Applications. It was a group at NC State that focused on bettering online education. IMP was one of the subgroups that focused specifically on videography. This is a photo of the IMP team. John Gordon served as my primary supervisor and also acted as a producer at IMP. He taught me how to be a good employee in a professional space and work alongside my coworkers. The other two displayed are Arthur and Michael, who gave me behind the camera experience and taught me how to work on a film set. These were my three primary workspaces. The film studio was a fully equipped space that contained cameras, lights, microphones, and other such equipment that could be used to create a video. In the top right is the Zoom room, which was primarily used to meet with the greater part of Delta, but could also be used for other in-house meetings. In the middle is a photo of my desk workspace, which was in the office. I could be found here if I was doing organization, graphic design, or video editing. My school experience greatly contributed to my internship. Through the Adobe Digital Media Academy, I developed soft skills and hard skills. Last year, I even worked on a documentary project with my entire academy, this gave me the experience necessary to go into my internship. I continued to build on these fundamentals during the internship. I learned how to use technical equipment, increasing my versatility. I learned how to network and expanded my breach from Raleigh to Ottawa, Canada. I learned to take initiative, and within the first week of my internship, I created a short film, and I learned how to manage time, using all of my resources effectively and efficiently. With creative time and all the resources I could possibly use, my portfolio significantly expanded during this past summer. In the top left is a flyer handout that I created for directions to park shops, which is the office for IMP. In the bottom left and top right are two Instagram reels I created, the bottom left in an antique store and the top right at an NC State library. On the bottom right is a horror-themed trailer I created called Annie. And then in the middle is an internship prep handout, or an interview prep handout, which could be used for anyone who was interviewing for Delta. My overall project was used, um, my overall project was interviewing an indie sci-fi filmmaker who was displayed on the bottom left. After, uh, after making the network connection, I began pre-production, which is displayed in the top middle. I organized my interview questions in a way that would be creative and flow well for my documentary. The next step was setup, which is displayed in the top right. 
With my coworkers, I set up a magenta background, two cameras, three-point lighting, and a microphone for audio. The actual presentation itself went well, and he answered all of my questions about the film industry genuinely and articulately. The top left and bottom right are two films he created which I used in the editing process. Thank you so much for watching. And through this internship, I learned that not only do I want to be a filmmaker, but I want to be a producer. I appreciate my internship supervisor for giving me this opportunity and the Adobe Digital Media Academy for supplying me with the resources. Thank you for watching. And are there any questions? My internship at Alpha Graphics. Hi. My name is Sophie Jones, and I am a high school senior currently enrolled in the Adobe Digital Media Academy. Today, I would like to tell you about my experience at Alpha Graphics over this past summer. So a little bit about Alpha Graphics. They specialize in marketing, printing, and design. Here, there are three main departments that work together as a team to create every order. The production to team is in charge of physical printouts as well as the assembling of products while the design team is in charge of preparing and finalizing files. Finally, the sales team handles clients directly, scheduling jobs as well as communicating with each client. Here are my supervisors, Nicole Byron and Eric Webb. Nicole was my main supervisor, helping me with day-to-day -day tasks as well as any questions that might arise. Eric Webb is the current owner of Alpha Graphics Carry. My main day-to-day -day tasks took place in the, in the production department. I handled things such as assembling products and helping to create in-house promotional material. Some of these examples include cutting business cards, hole punching, assembling binders, and running the printers. My other main tasks took place in the design department. Here, I was able to learn a lot about how Adobe programs are used in real workplace environments. I was able to prepare files for printing using programs such as Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Acrobat. Relation to class. In class, we were able to use a lot of Adobe programs such as Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Acrobat, and Adobe Photoshop. Throughout my internship, I was able to use these same project projects to create physical deliverables. I was also able to use my time management skills from class in order to get all of my projects in by the deadline. For my main project, I wanted to create five vinyl sticker advertisements to be included with Alpha Graphics small format orders. These would be intended to advertise large format orders. I began by brainstorming and sketching. I came up with a lot of ideas, and here you can see three of my best. On the left is a character design, in the middle is a paint bucket, and on the right is a landscape design. Once I chose my best five designs, I began to develop each of them in Adobe Illustrator. Here you can see the progress of my first design, the landscape. I ended up choosing to draw an acrylic panel that would advertise one of Alpha Graphics' many products. Here you can see the progress of another one of my designs, the character stand. I focused on making each of the shapes look realistic, as if the character stand were actually sitting on a desk. Here are my first final three products. In the first design, I drew a picture that was printed onto a large wall in order to showcase large format printing. In the second card, I drew a poster with the words, think big, in order to encourage customers to consider buying large format products. For card number three, I decided to showcase Alpha Graphics metal lettering. Here are my last two final designs. For card four, I ended up designing a mountain landscape on an acrylic panel. I added perspective by giving it slant and shading. Finally, for my last design, I chose to do thing one from Dr. Seuss in order to showcase a fun and creative aspect of Alpha Graphics. Impact on my future career. This internship has aligned with my idea of a future career. I still hope to become a graphic designer or an animator. This internship has also greatly helped me build my skills as well as develop professional connections. Thank you all for listening to my presentation. Are there any questions?
Over the summer, I got the chance to intern at Alpha Graphics. My name is Molly Klump, and I've been enrolled in the Adobe Digital Media Academy. And today, I will be telling you my experience with Alpha Graphics. Alpha Graphics is located currently in Cary, North Carolina, with around 242 locations. These are my supervisors. On the left is Nicole Byron, and on the right, I have current owner Eric Webb. What we do. We do printing, design, and marketing work. They are split into three departments, sales, production, and designing. All three teams have to work together in order to meet all project deadlines. The types of people that we work with are Qantas Club of Raleigh, Epic Games, and Cocoa Booth Foundation, and many more. My day-to-day -day, day -day tasks included printing, designing, and filing. When I was with the production team, I was making physical products, such as cutting business cards, printing mass paper orders, and, and applying vinyl signage. When I was with the design team, Nicole taught me how to prep files for production, add crop marks, and bleeds. And then when I was with the sales team, I was managing current orders, contacting clients, and filing previous orders. How the Academy prepared me by the Adobe Suite. In classes, we used the Adobe Suite to create many designs, so that was really useful when I was working with the design team. And then collaborative work. We are given lots of projects that we have to work together, so working with other departments was really helpful. What I gained. I gained more Adobe knowledge when I was designing and then time management. We were given two to three tasks daily, so we had to keep on time to make sure we didn't stay behind. This affects my future career by exposing me to the work field and preparing me for future jobs, and then continuing me to continue wanting to have a job in technology. My main project was to create three designs of small formatted products that could be included in large formatted orders. These are my final products. On the bottom left, I have a faux invitation. On the top right, I have a calendar. And then on the bottom right, I have a postcard. All three of these designs promote alpha graphics, and they show examples of work that can be done at alpha graphics. I want to thank everyone at alpha graphics, my academy coordinators, and you all here today listening to me. Are there any questions? Hi, my name is Katie Brown, and this is my presentation on my internship I completed this past summer. I entered at a small business called Queen Wright Media, and this was my supervisor and founder of the company, Ms. Jennifer Howard, and her little assistant, Boone. Since it's a small business, it is run out of my supervisor's home, so most of my time was spent here while some of it was online. Queen Wright Media is all about spreading awareness about sustainable agriculture, and it works with scientists and experts to spread awareness and get out into the public. It also works closely with various departments, such as NC State University's Soil Sciences. What I learned throughout this time is that a small business, things can change in an instant, so you have to be ready to adapt and get ready to change your plans. I also learned a lot more about Photoshop and Canva, as these are the main platforms I used. And I learned about this awesome planning website called ClickUp, which allows you to sort and go through any assignments you have. Most of my time here was spent creating graphics, photoshopping images, creating infographics, summarizing information and packaging orders, and just so much more. What I learned throughout my experience is that a small business just isn't for me. There's plenty of people out there who love all the changes, but I very much so like a dependable schedule that I can go off of. I also learned that NC State is an amazing school and it solidified my desire to go there soon. What I learned in the academy, such as the Adobe Suite, specifically Photoshop, really helped me throughout this because Photoshop was used so much throughout my internship, as well as Canva, which we touched on a good bit. I also used all of my project managing skills as there are multiple projects at multiple times, so being able to go through and just know how to sort out my time was so helpful. Finally, my proposed project. We decided to create an infographic called Plant These. 
The idea behind this was we wanted to get the fun way of spreading awareness to the community about plants that are not only good for the environment, they also look good in front of your homes as well as attract pollinators. The idea behind this was we wanted to have a virtual version that we could post online on Facebook or any other social media as well as websites and have versions that we can print out print out and put, put in packages, send out in the mail, or just have somewhere as pamphlets for people to pick up and read. I was really happy with how this turned out. It took me over 30 hours just to draw all the separate little graphics by hand. That was my internship experience. My name is Katie Brown, and I'd like to thank my supervisor, Ms. Jennifer Howard, for giving me the awesome experience, as well as all of you guys here listening. Thank you. Are there any questions? Hi, my name is Parker Smith. I'm currently enrolled in the Adobe Digital Media Academy, and this is my internship experience. I had the opportunity to work at Adobe Broadway Zoological Park, and as a park, they strive to promote uh, uh, conservation, uh, family-friendly atmosphere, and an educational experience. My main supervisor is Kurt Smith. He's the co-owner of the zoo. He was the person that would assign me my work, or I would go to him with any questions. My job site. My job site was located all at home, and it was all online. The only time I ever went into the zoo was either to take photos of animals or to ask my supervisor a question in person. Responsibilities. One of my day-to-day -day responsibilities was checking my email to make sure I had new, new, no new tasks or assignments. Other responsibilities were researching animals, uh, making signs and logos, and printing signs. The logos. As you can see on the screen, I created three types of logos. On the left, I have a savanna sunset with two of giraffes and an acacia tree. In the middle, I have four colorful squares with a cutout of four different animals you can find at the zoo. Also, on the right, I have a simplistic circle design with negative space in the shape of two giraffes. I discussed with my uncle, and he believed that the middle logo would be best for the zoo. After creating the logo, I had the responsibility of creating informational signs for each individual animal. I sat down with him, and we discussed what type of, what type of information he would like on the signs. He wanted general information, general information like what the animal eats, where they live, how much they weigh, and how long they live. <coughs> he wanted graphic, graphical graphics on the sign. These things include the graphic of the continent which the animal lived on, and highlighted in red the exact region they lived. After we discussed what information he wanted on the sign, uh, we came up with a list of about 215 different animals. These animals include birds, primates, reptiles, cats, and insects. After designing all the signs, I was given the responsibility to find a print shop in our community to get these signs, signs printed. I researched three different print shops, and I decide, decided to go with Alpha Graphics because they were the, had the best reviews and the most uh, affordable. Throughout my internship, I gained a lot of experience. These things include logo and sign design, worth ethic, how to manage my time, and sign printing. The internship is actually related to my class in different ways. These things include Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop, which I learned previously in my digital media class. I also learned how to better uh, manage my time, which I had to make sure I turned in work on time during my internship, which I learned previously in class. And my plans after high school. I would like to attend a four-year four university like NC State or Savannah College of Art and Design. In college, I would love to uh, major in graphic design. I'd like to thank all of you all for listening. I'd like to thank my supervisor, Kurt Smith, and Ms. House, my academy coordinator. Are there any questions? Hello, everyone. My name is Ryan Topol. I'm part of the Adobe Digital Media Academy, and this is my internship experience at KDEX Global. To put it simply, KDEX Global offers cloud consulting and services to third-party companies. Since creating, 
Since creating a cloud server is often a difficult and time-consuming task for companies not practicing tech, Candice Global aims to act, to act as the middleman, providing a simple and easy way to give access to the cloud. My internship supervisor, Han Kothny, guided and mentored me through this internship process. My job site resided in a co-working space, which was full of entrepreneur, entrepreneurs and startup companies looking to grow the business. Since most of the employees in this industry were remotely, it prompted me to do so as well, since there would be no real reason to show up. I was tasked with creating a website under these three requirements. It had to have state-of-the-art functionality, a modern design, and need to be economically sustainable. I used Adobe Experience Designer as my wireframing tool and Adobe Dreamweaver as the tool to build my website, and that was taught to me in one of my Adobe Digital Media classes. First, I needed inspiration. I researched various company websites and gained and drew inspiration mainly from IBM, Asana, and Kindrel. I found that they had a minimalistic, sleek design that conveyed information easily. After researching, I then wireframed each page. I kept the same simplistic design I saw previously, as well as adding a double navigation bar at the top for clarity. I used an orange color scheme that was derived from the current logo. Each page has a page header that displays a brief overview of the information of that specific page, followed by, followed by a page break with the main page information placed underneath. After I wireframed each page, I began developing the website in Adobe Dreamweaver. Each page uses a simple grid style layout as it was the most easiest to implement when making the website responsive. On the left is a monitor aspect ratio view of the website, and on the right is a full page view. This page is the home page which displays general information about the website. This is the cloud services page which promotes the specifics of which they provide for the cloud. This is the careers page, which they can post all the careers they need for people to apply to. And this is the contact page where people can contact the company if they have any questions. Throughout this internship and creating the website, I now have a greater understanding of how HTML and CSS works and working in a professional environment. I demonstrated time management, self-discipline, and adaptability when creating the website through various deadlines and sometimes when creating the website, it would never work how you wanted it to. For my future plans, uh, I've always wanted to be a software developer and major in computer science. And due to this, I feel way more prepared for college and collaborating in software development. I would first like to thank my internship supervisor and Ms. House for giving me this internship opportunity and everyone here for listening. Are there any questions? Hello, my name is London Dove, and I'm part of the Adobe Digital Media Academy. I, for my internship, I mean, I'm here to tell you about my internship. So for my internship, I decided to work with Elizabeth Ashley & Co., a photography business located in Durham, North Carolina. Within this building, we have a, a photography studio and office. Um, this company mainly focuses on wedding, lifestyle, and branding themed photography. Throughout my internship, my supervisor, my supervisor was Ashley. She is the owner, lead photographer, and editor of the company. I also worked closely with Grace, the office manager, and the administrative assistant and lighting specialist, Micah. Throughout my internship, I had a variety of responsibilities and tasks that I had to handle. The number one thing is I had to make sure the studio was prepared before and after clients. I worked closely with the clients to make sure they were good during the photo shoot. And I also did a lot of the behind the scenes work, such as taking pictures and videos to pre prepare for her Instagram. Um, I also did other office tasks, such as doing Trello for, to create re-editing lists. I also did a lot of spreadsheets and make sure packaging was good and ready to send off for clients. Alongside these daily tasks, I also had one major project that I had to do. I had my supervisor, I mean, for my project, I decided to do um, advertisements to further promote the company. For my advertisements, I had my, I had my supervisor send me examples of what type of graphics that she would like. 
I then, I then created a Pinterest and to look for inspiration on different ways on how I can create these sketches. Here's my final product. Throughout this internship, I feel like I, I learned so much, I gained so much experience, especially with working with clients and my organizational skills. Alongside this, I also learned new software such as PicMonkey and Lightroom. I feel like this internship related a lot with being with digital media, the Digital Media Academy, especially when it came to time management and organizational skills. When, within the academy, we always have to make sure where our work is going, make sure we stay organized, as well as turning in our projects on time with our time management skills. I quickly realized that this is a very important thing to have, a, a very important skill to have when working in a company. We always had to make sure our clients were okay, where their packaging, where their packaging would be going, what they ordered, such as um, photo books and USBs, along with their pictures. Alongside this, I also got to continue using the programs that I learned within the Digital Media Academy, such as InDesign and Photoshop. I feel like I learned a lot of professional skills that I could use in my future in my future careers and job settings. As of right now, I want to go to a four-year college to pursue my dreams in being in the healthcare field. I would like to thank Ms. Ashley for letting me onto the Elizabeth Ashley and Co. team, and I would also like to thank you for listening to my presentation. Are there any questions? Hello. My name is Maddie Doolin, and I am a part of the Adobe Digital Media Academy. And I had the ability to partake in an internship at the Holly Springs Farmer's Market over the summer. The Holly Springs Farmer's Market is what I would consider an atypical job site. When I think job site, I think indoors, at a desk, maybe a cubicle. All my work at the Holly Springs Farmer's Market was done outside. So I wasn't just battling my day-to-day -day tasks. But I was also battling the elements at certain points, which was not fun. The F Holly Springs Farmers Market's goal is to create a location where local vendors can sell their products and interact with the community. It is open every Saturday besides a few of them, and it runs from 8 o'clock to noon. Though I was up at 5.30 in the morning, I would arrive at 6.30 and stay there till 1.30 in the afternoon. I would help with setting up, running the farmer's market, and then shutting it all down at the end of the day. There are over 30 vendors at the market at any time, and they're constantly changing. At the farmer's market, you need to make sure each of them knows where to set up their booths and how they're all going to work together. These are my supervisors. I had three wonderful people helping me out. Jessica Stiles, who helped me with the technological side and the paperwork, and then Valerie Rye and Todd Garner, who helped me with all of my on-site activities. I would not know what I know now if it wasn't for these wonderful people, and I would like to thank them. My experience at the Holly Springs Farmer's Market, as I said before, was a bit different than I expected. One thing I learned is about planning. It did happen every Saturday, but different type of, types of events happened each time. So you had to come up with a schedule and make sure it runs smoothly. That leads into the second thing, adaptation. When you have a schedule, statistically speaking, it's not always going to turn out the way you want it to. So you need to be ready to change and adapt to whatever is coming your way. One of the other most important things I think I experienced was learning about local small businesses. All of the vendors were local small businesses, and it was so inspiring to hear about all of their stories and how they built their businesses from the ground up. For my project proposal, I came up with one idea I can do while I was at my internship. I came up with a three-step plan. Step number one, take photos of the environment. Step number two, take videos of the environment. Step number three, take video interviews of the vendors. My three-step plan, I use the Adobe Creative Cloud, which I learned through my academy classes. Throughout all the technological classes I've taken since my freshman year, I feel as though I have learned a lot of information that has been very helpful to me. Two of the main softwares I used was Adobe Premiere Pro for video editing and Adobe Photoshop for photo editing. I had a general understanding of what these did beforehand, but now I can confidently say 
I can use these in almost any situation. Part of my three-step plan, the first part was taking photos. These are some of my favorite photos I took at the farmer's market. Each morning, I would walk around to each of the vendors and take photos of the new products they were selling. I would then take these photos into Photoshop, make slight corrections, color corrections, and all of that stuff, and then send them back out to the vendors that they could use in their social medias, and then also use the photos for our own social media accounts. The second part of my three-step plan was to take videos of the environment. We would have a different musical guest each week, and I would take short videos of that to post. And I also prided myself on taking a lot of videos of the people walking through the market and how they interacted with the vendors. It was a very fun experience to see. And then the last part of my three-step plan was my favorite. I got to do interviews with the vendors at the farmer's market. With there being over 30 vendors at any given time, I sadly was not able to reach all of them, but I was able to get a good majority of them. These are two of the favorite interviews I conducted with Tammy Purdue from Sweet Pea Urban Gardens and Jennifer Sanford from Chickadee Farms. Both of these ladies, very inspiring to hear their stories about how they built their own businesses, where they started, and where they wish to go in the future. In my future, uh, the farmer's market has taught me a lot of things. I taught that I liked how loose the schedule was. I liked having a new problem each day. I liked spicing things up once in a while. It was a lot of fun. Um, I also like socializing. When you have a job that is surrounded by people, you learn if you're a people person or not. Luckily, I was. So I really enjoyed that. And I love doing film. Previously, I hadn't been given a lot of opportunities to test out what I wanted to do in film. But this, I basically got to go crazy and do whatever I wanted. So in my future, I would like to attend a four-year university majoring in video and radio production, but I would like to minor in theater arts education to become a theater teacher. Uh, I would like to thank everyone at the Farmer's Market and all of you for listening. Do you have any questions? Yes. Hi, my name is Ash Kanofsky, and over the summer I was given the opportunity to, in to intern at Digital P Media. I'm a senior enrolled in the Digital Media Academy, and, and today I will be telling you about my internship experience. Digital P, P Media is a TV broadcasting and video production company, and it's based in Cary, North Carolina. On the job site, I spend my time in an office-like building working on video edits and getting tips and tricks from my coworkers. These, <coughs> these are my supervisors, Peyote Perryman and Aaron Sloan. When I was originally looking for an internship, I reached out to Aaron, and she helped me throughout the entire process. They both worked hard to make me feel welcome as an intern, as well as teach me valuable tips and tricks from inside the field. I gained lots of valuable experience during my time, such as video editing skills, as well as I learned as well as I learned a new software called Avid Media Composer. I also had the opportunity to attend an on-location video shoot at the Cary Town Hall Center called Cary All Hands. I was able to help set up camera equipment and test the lighting, and I was also able to sit in the control room and watch the behind the scenes of a live TV broadcast. My final project was to create a short video advertisement for the Hemlock Bluffs Nature Preserve informing people about the importance of the park. I began by writing a script and recording a voiceover before looking through the company's video footage and selecting suitable clips to be used and edited together using Adobe Premiere Pro. I finally found some music to enhance the video before adding in some finishing touches and then it was complete and ready to be shared. My time at Digital P Media related to my academy classes because I learned how to create professional video edits and use a variety of different software, and I'm also able to apply the knowledge I gained to in-class projects. I also am able to, util to utilize all of the soft skills that I improved upon, such as communication, teamwork, and strong work ethic. An average day was spent sorting through video footage to be used in future projects, finding music to be used in a future TV broadcast called Sweetwater, and traveling to nearby filming locations. Now that I have a better understanding of the industry, my 
my interest in the field of digital media is enhanced. However, I've learned that while I do enjoy video editing, I prefer graphic design and illustration. It also demonstrates to future employers that I have a strong work ethic. I would like to thank my supervisors for giving me this wonderful opportunity, as well as everyone here for listening to my experiences today. Are there any questions? Hi everyone, my name is Marin Fries, and I'm a senior in the Adobe Digital Media Academy and I'm very excited to share my internship experience with you all today. Over the summer, I was privileged enough to work with SK Transit. SK Transit is a ground transportation company specializing in trucking arrangements. They provide shipping and transportation with the exception of biomedical and biohazard materials. I did my internship remotely and this is my workplace setting where I completed all of my projects digitally. I got to work with my supervisor, Lynn Coy. She is the co-owner of SK Transit alongside her husband, Thomas. Lynn was my main source of communication throughout this, throughout this process and provided me with all my projects. I got to learn many life skills throughout this experience and since my internship was done online, I gained a good understanding of the importance of digital marketing. We got to attend events together where I, where I got to understand the importance of networking and how communication is important in everything that we did. I also got to design SK Transit's website where I learned what trucking companies can benefit from in their pages. Time management is also an important skill especially when I was completing multiple projects at one time. On the left is the main page of the website I created. We discussed layout options and decided on an easy to navigate three page site, including a home page, a careers page, and a contact page. My supervisor decided on a blue and orange color scheme, so we kept that in mind for further deliverables. The image on the right is one of the many informational flyer mockups I created. I worked in Canva and made these flyers along with a hiring, a hiring flyer which could be given out to people interested in working. Even though my internship was done remotely, my supervisor and I had frequent meetups discussing further steps in our process. The photo on the left is us at an event my supervisor set up for nonprofit organizations, where myself and three other helpers got to collaborate and work on keeping the event running smoothly. The image on the right is us at a campaign event where I got to meet influential people involved in our local politics. I decided to focus my main project on creating promotional products branded to SK Transit. Knowing that my supervisor frequently hosts and attends meet, uh, events, I decided to create a tablecloth that could be used for event booths, and a pen and can holder that could be given away to potential customers. My prior experiences in the Adobe Digital Media Academy has prepared me so well for this internship. I can confidently say my skills have strengthened, and being certified in the Adobe Suite has only made projects easier for me. Practicing time management and collaboration, like in SkillsUSA, has prepared me for this and my future experiences. All in all, I had an amazing time at SK Transit where I learned many important skills that I will definitely be using later in life. Here are some of the college I, colleges I plan to attend to, and this experience has solidified the fact that when I go to college, I want to major or be in the mass communications field. By being provided with opportunities to work on networking and advertising, I know that my skills have strengthened and I'm very grateful for this experience. I would like to thank Lynn Coy for welcoming me into SK Transit with open arms and teaching me so many skills that I will definitely use later in life. This experience has created a future for me past high school and I'm really grateful for it. Thank you and are there any questions? Hi, my name is Wyatt Turner and I am enrolled in the Adobe Digital Media Academy. I was fortunate enough to spend my summer interning at Highlander Construction. This was my supervisor for the duration of my internship, Mr. George Galichuk. Mr. Galichuk was a hardworking, reliable employer 
providing me with challenging work, helping me grow, and making this experience well worth my while. So what is Highlander Construction? Highlander Construction is a construction company with over 30 years of experience located in the greater Raleigh area, providing you with only the highest quality work. Seen on the right of this slide is the logo of the company, something I'll get more into later in this presentation. My responsibilities at Highlander Construction included using the Adobe Suite to create a logo for the company, clean up and add information to the website, and film and edit videos of the work we were doing on site. My final responsibility was to manage the Google business profile, adding all the work we had done over summer to the page. One of my assignments while working at Highlander Construction is seen on the left. It is a motion graphic of the logo and acts as an intro to the videos seen on the Google business page. The experience I gained while working at Highlander Construction aligned with a lot of the projects we had already been doing in the academy. This included graphic design through the creation of the logo and the motion graphic, video through my daily work of filming and editing, communication by talking with Mr. Galchuk about the work I was doing and asking questions, and teamwork by working daily with my coworkers and Mr. Galchuk. The major project, the major project assigned to me by Mr. Galchuk was to design a logo for the company. The process included me drafting multiple designs for Mr. Galchuk to choose from. With a focus on the home, as Highlander Construction does residential work, and a Highlander sword, as this was an aspect of the original logo Mr. Galchuk liked, each design was meant to convey the message of a construction company. In the end, Mr. Galchuk chose the design scene in the bottom left for me to finalize in Adobe Illustrator. The final product is a house with a Highlander sword seen down the middle. With input from Mr. Galichuk, I added in a handsaw and a screwdriver to help better illustrate the fact that this was the logo of a construction company. With my internship complete, how did this affect my future plans? Well, my plan for a while now has been to attend UNC Wilmington and major in business with a concentration in management and leadership. With this degree, and experience I continue to gain working jobs similar to my internship, I hope to one day own a business where we do work similar to that of Highlander Construction. My daily work of filming and editing helped me also rediscover a love of video that I had when I was younger and something I'm fortunate enough to be doing now in my Adobe classes. This helped open the door for my future as I realized I can do what I did for Mr. Galichuk for myself for hopefully my construction business one day. Thank you so much, Mr. Galchuk, for providing me with this opportunity, and thank you to the Academy coordinators. And thank all of you for coming and listening. Are there any questions? Hello, everyone. My name is BZ Lewis. I am currently a student in the Adobe Digital Media Academy. I was fortunate enough this summer to complete an internship at Axiom Environmental. A little bit about Axiom is that it was actually founded in 2004 by my very own uncle, Mr. Grant Lewis. He, had he was pursuing his dreams to build his own company, which is based right here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Now, Axiom Environmental, as you may have guessed by the name, is an environmental science company. They specialize in environmental investigations, environmental surveys, as well as natural resource restoration services that solve complex ecological issues. They function throughout most of the East Coast of the United States. Let's meet the team in Axiom. On the right is Mr. Alexander Smith, often goes by Sandy Smith. He's an amazing head of the company with decades of experience and a very passionate scientist. In the center is Ms. Backwin. She was my main supervisor throughout this internship and someone who I enjoyed working with the most. Left again is Mr. Grant Lewis, the founder and one of the most passionate soil scientists I've ever met. Here, I just wanted to go over some of the basic responsibilities and projects that were expected of me throughout this internship. Now, the first one is communication. It may seem like a relatively basic aspect, however, it was made very difficult because I was communicating in such a foreign and professional environment. Now, two of the projects that were expected of me to complete were to completely overhaul the Axiom website and give it updated information and looks. 
and next was to create a new company brochure. This is what I looked like over most of the summer. I had a remote job, a remote job site throughout this internship. It made sense for me to go into the office because all of the employees and scientists were quite literally out in the fields doing land surveys. I don't think I would have been able to complete this internship if not for my previous digital media experience. I was able to complete a project management class, which helped me tremendously in learning how to organize and execute this task properly. And next is Adobe Dreamweaver, an Adobe application in which I was able to become certified in, which gave me a basic understanding of HTML and CSS code that helped me tremendously figure out how to build and make changes to a website. And finally were SkillsUSA competitions. This helped me familiarize with teamwork and professional collaboration, as well as have a great work environment. Here's just an example of the Axiom webpage. On the left is Axiom's original homepage, and on the right is my version of the homepage. Now, Axiom had created their website on Squarespace, which was an application I had never used before. I had only worked in Adobe Dreamweaver, so it was very difficult having to organize my time between researching how to efficiently use Squarespace while also still meeting updates and deadlines with Ms. Backwin. Next is just another example of the website. This is the staff page. Again, on the left is Axioms, and on the right is my iteration. Now, the version of Squarespace not only was foreign to me, but it was also very outdated, being almost eight years old. No one at the office really knew about website design or how to update it, so I was kind of on my own there. Next brings me to my second set of deliverables, which was making the company brochure. This was the original one that they made, and it wasn't used that often. As you can see, it's lacking in color, it has an excess amount of logos on it, and the information just seems very scrambled in general. I made three iterations of these brochures, all of which Axiom can use, with this one being the first. I wanted to really organize the information as well as update it using the help of Mr. Lewis and Ms. Fackman. Here's my second design for the brochure. All of the colors I used in this scheme were a part of the logo so that they would create a cohesive flow. And finally, here is my last brochure design. This was my favorite part of the project as I really enjoyed using Adobe Illustrator to create these graphics and Ms. Fackman gave me so much creative freedom throughout this internship. And next, some of the things that I learned. Communication is key. It was very difficult for me. I was having lots of motivational skill issues uh, since I was working at home through a remote job site and I really learned how to professionally compose emails, and clearly convey my thoughts and ideas. Another thing is that making websites are very difficult. It's most likely something that I figured out I may not want to do in the future. However, the hard and soft skills that I've improved and learned will definitely help me in whatever professional job space that I go into, whether it is something with graphic design or something else. Thank you, and are there any questions? Hello, my name is Rachel Carr. I'm in the Adobe Digital Media Academy, and today I'm going to be telling you about my senior internship experience. I interned at a church called the Temple of Pentecost, specifically with Student Impact Ministries. Student Impact Ministries is a youth group for students in middle school through high school graduation. Here are some of the people that really impacted my time at the Pentecost. On the left, you'll see Caleb and his wife, Brittany. Caleb was my supervisor and the youth pastor for Student Impact Ministries. In the middle, you'll see Daniel and his wife, Erin. Daniel and Erin are on the digital media team and showed me how to run the sound booth. On the right, you'll see Brandon. Brandon is a videographer who also is on the digital media team. He taught me a lot about videography and let me use his equipment to film my project. One of my main duties and responsibilities was to run the sound booth. This is where I would run the computers for the services. I would project slideshows, music, and games for Caleb's lessons. I was also in charge of the soundboard. I had to make sure that everyone's mics and instruments were at the right volume level and functioning correctly before the lesson started. I was also a photographer for their events. Here are some pictures I took and edited for their social media. I would photograph their services and their events. For my project, I created a promotional video for Student Impact Ministries. I interviewed Caleb and added different shots to showcase what you could expect at the church. Here's a small clip of my work. I 
I learned a lot at my internship. I learned how to use a lot of new equipment, and I learned a lot about effective communication. Communicating with so many people at one time allowed me to gain new connections, which is important in any career field. I faced a few challenges at my internship. My computer at home couldn't run Adobe software, so I had to find other ways to complete my projects. Relying on others was also a challenge because some of the people I worked with couldn't reply consistently, which slowed down the process of completing a project. Learning all the new equipment was also hard because I had to learn a lot in a short amount of time. As I was completing these projects, I realized that a lot of what I was doing was related to what I had learned in the academy. I was using Adobe Premiere to complete my videos and Adobe Lightroom to edit all my pictures. Knowing lighting and framing was also useful when setting up equipment. Time efficiency is also something that is stressed in the academy, so already having that skill was useful when completing my projects. We also learned about keeping a company's branding consistent in the academy. I kept that in mind when completing my projects. Completing this internship solidified the fact that I want to pursue photography and videography in my future. I also gained a lot of hard and soft skills, which I can bring into my jobs. I would like to thank Caleb Douglas for letting me intern at the Temple of Pentecost and all of you for listening. Are there any questions? Hi, my name is Eric Dane, and I'm a member of the Adobe Digital Media Academy. I am thankful and was fortunate enough to spend the summer interning at 80 Graphics. 80 Graphics is a freelance business ran by my internship supervisor, Mr. Thomas. He produces photos and videos for high school sports teams, summer sports camps, artists, and more. My work environment was my room due to the fact that 80 Graphics is a freelance business. There wasn't a physical location that I needed to be at. Therefore, I was able to do most of my work remotely. Some work responsibilities that I had was making sure that my work was up to par and turned in on time. Another responsibility was making sure that, my, that I managed my time well. I've always been bad at this, so this was a great learning experience. I also made sure that I communicated regularly with Mr. Thomas and that I stayed organized. During this internship, I was able to fully utilize the skills that I learned from being in the Adobe Digital Media Academy. I use Adobe Illustrator for any graphic-related work, and I use Adobe Premiere Pro for any video-related projects. Here are some examples of my work. On the left is me editing a video of characters from a children's book, and on the right is me editing a rotating card animation. For my personal project, I recorded and edited a behind-the-scenes video of a Middle Creek photo shoot. Before this, I had never used a video camera before. Luckily, Mr. Thomas let me borrow one of his and taught me the basics of how to use it. I then used the footage that I got, and I put together a behind-the-scenes video using Adobe Premiere Pro. This internship has taught me many valuable experiences. Those being, I became better and more efficient at video editing. I learned the importance of good communication. I was better at time management. And I learned new ways to help me stay organized. Before this internship, I was interested in too many fields with digital media for my own good. I've always planned on attending a four-year university, and I still plan on doing so. But I didn't know what I wanted to do the most. Doing the work for this internship has helped me narrow down my career choices to just two, with my primary focus being on graphic design, and my secondary choice being film. I would like to thank Mr. Thomas and the Academy coordinators for this wonderful internship opportunity. Not everyone gets to experience what it's like interning for a freelance business. I plan on continuing to work with Mr. Thomas even after this internship. Thank you all for listening. I really appreciate you all for being here. Are there any questions? Hello, my name is Sammy Spencer. And I'm Jenna Smith. This summer, we interned at Imagescapes Embroidery. Here are some pictures of us on the job. Here are our supervisors, Ms. Kimber McConaughey and Vicki Seymour. Ms. Kimber and Ms. Vicki are the sole owners of Imagescapes Embroidery. Together, they work to create designs for local businesses and institutions. Ms. Vicki showed us how to create designs Ms. Vicky showed us how to use the machines and also better understand the process of making apparel. Imagescapes creates custom apparel for local businesses and schools. 
clients are able to send almost any design, such as a logo, to be mass produced onto a garment. They offer multiple services, such as screen printing, heat pressing, and embroidery. The main job site of Imagescapes is in the back of Miss Kimber's house. This area includes five embroidery heads, uh, office space, and storage. During our time at Imagescapes, we learned the basics of how to use the embroidery machines. By the end of our time here, we were able to set up the machines, hoop different garments, create designs, and package up the products for final shipping. For most of our work, we use Adobe, Photoshop, and Illustrator to create our designs. When picking out fabrics, we use handheld pamphlets that contain small samples of each kind. This internship connected directly with our academy at school. We used the same exact programs that we used in school to create our designs. This prior experience better prepared us for all of the work that Kimber would assign us. When working at Imagescapes, we got to experience firsthand what it's like to run a small business. We got to see the organization and time management it takes for Ms. Kimber and Ms. Vicky to complete all the projects. During our time at Imagescapes, we got to learn much more about the embroidery machines and the process of embroidery. We also got to experience different work styles, such as the one-on-one -on -one time with Ms. Kimber and Ms. Vicky, as well as the independent work in Illustrator. During this time, we also got to observe what a business should look like. A business should have time management, structure, and confidence. Near the end of our time at Imagescapes, Sammy and I helped Ms. Kimber set up the freshman orientation where we, were, where we were selling our designs that we made for the school. It was a rewarding experience to be able to see people's genuine reactions to our work, especially because they didn't know that it was us who created the designs. This is the facility. As you can see, these are four of the five embroidery heads, as well as some different sized embroidery hoops for different sized designs. Here are some of our designs. Sammy and I worked together to make the designs that we thought the student body of Middle Creek would enjoy and want to wear. Not only did we want to make designs for the school, the students, but we also want to make designs for the staff and parents of Middle Creek to rep as well. Here are some more of our designs. We spent most of our time at our internship working on creating these designs. We get to see people all around school wearing our designs and it makes us so proud of all the work we have done. During my time with Ms. Cameron and Ms. Vicky, I had a different kind of experience when it came to working. I was used to making designs in class not for a purpose other than a grade. I realized that I want my career to revolve around hands-on projects because I believe that this is where my creativity comes to life. During my experience, I realized that while I do want to work in the apparels industry, I am not interested in embroidery specifically. This internship did give me valuable experience that can put me one step ahead of the competition. I'm Sammy Spencer. I would just like to thank you all for coming to our summer internship presentation. And I'm Jenna Smith, and we would like to specifically thank Miss Vicky and Miss Kimber, and also Miss Murray and Miss House for coordinating our internship. Are there any questions? Hi, my name is Jessica Strickland, and over the summer I was able to intern at Zelic Solutions. This is our team. We currently have a U.S. office and a Ukraine office. However, the Ukraine office had to move to Poland because of the war. This is the inside of our office. On the left, we have a main conference room where we can hold Zoom meetings with the Krakow office. On the right, we have a big area where everyone usually works. And as you can see, we have a spike ball in the middle so we can get up and play around if we need to stretch. And it also made it able or easily able for us to get up and talk to other people in different departments. This is the outside of our building. We worked in a building where uh, lots of other companies worked. And we usually got to talk to these companies and figure out what they were doing and see new ideas. As for what Zelic does, Zelic creates patient engagement systems for pharmaceutical companies. These systems allow for the pharmaceutical companies to increase their patient engagement and allow patients to track their drug shipments and their progress while using the drug. On the left is Brandon Stownbaugh. He was the lead UI UX designer, which is user interface and user experience, and he was also my supervisor. On the right is Chuck Picarillo, and he is the CEO of Zelic Solutions. Some experience I gained while working at Zelic, I was able to experience a workplace environment and learn the basic aspects of UI and UX. I was able to adjust projects based on what clients needed, and I was also able to work with several different departments in order to complete a project. 
For my big project, I was able to redesign their whole design system. I started with presentation cards, and I have five different categories here. I have a just a title card, an image card, an event card, video card, and a file card. Each one includes a small bit of information and a call to action that allows users to click on and navigate around the website. Here is some navigation. I have navigation for a mobile app and a website that allows users to click around and easily navigate around the website. Some consent forms. These basically allow people to give consent to things such as like terms of service, and they can also send in information to pharmaceutical companies that allow them to collect information about patients. Content columns put together a small chunk of information and also include a call to action that encourages users to click on and investigate those areas. Here's an example of a website put together with several elements to see how well they blend together. And here's another example. Throughout my school and internship time, I was able to learn the basics of UI UX design as well as professionalism towards coworkers. I was also able to communicate between two, diff two different departments and I also learned a lot about time management. Thank you for listening. Are there any questions? Hi there, my name is Ryan Penwell, and for my internship, I entered at Fairview Rural Fire Department. Fairview Rural Fire Department is a local fire department located in Apex, and they have two stations off of 1010 Road. For this internship, I spent 50% of my time in the station, and I spent 50% of my time remotely at home. Fairview is trained in all forms of emergency response, such as fire, EMS, etc. A description of my supervisors. Assistant Chief Clapp is pictured below on the bottom picture, and he was the one that oversaw my entire presentation. Lou Cipriano is pictured above, and he was the one that worked with me on my PBM project of designing improvements to a shipping container. Like I listed earlier, my PBM was Scorch 21 Improvements, which is a, a, a shipping container that is located at Station 2 that they do practice fires in to train. Along with that, I also assisted out around the station. Some examples of work included doing hand sketches of the various improvements, which could include a fire grate to light fires on, severed partitions to help kind of make it more realistic, and also using the Fusion 360 to help model the shipping container. Along with that, I also met with Lou multiple times to help discuss the next round of improvements. Throughout this experience, I furthered my knowledge in the fields of mechanical engineering and also in the fields of the fire service. Along with that, I also learned how to manage my time very well and complete assignments efficiently and effectively. Some duties and responsibilities I had were completing the design improvements to the shipping container, which is pictured above. I also had to assist around the station in my free time. And at the beginning of the internship, I also completed several hydraulic work problems. This uh, internship had a very close relationship to my experience in school because I learned how to use a software called Fusion 360, which is very similar to a software I'm already certified in, which is Autodesk Inventor. I also was able to use the engineering and design process to help design several improvements, and I also used my organization skills that I learned in school. This internship has confirmed my engineering focus and I, it allows me to want to pursue a career in engineering. I hope to attend NC State University to either major in mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, or biomedical engineering. This is my final slide, and there's, this is multiple pictures of hand sketches. So we have the fire smoke generator on the first picture. The next one is several partitions, which can act as walls to make it, more simul to make it a more realistic simulation. I also have pictures just of the fire uh, shipping container on the third one, and also there's a bill of materials, which Lou drafted up, which shows each material that was used and also how much each material is gonna cost. I wanna give a big thank you to Lou Cipriano and also Assistant Chief Clapp on working with me throughout this internship, and also to Ms. House and all the teachers that have helped me with this experience. Thank you, and are there any questions? Hello, my name is Clark Hardy, and today I'll be talking about my experience as a summer intern at TE Connectivity. So first of all, what is TE Connectivity? This is a worldwide technology company um, that serves customers in over 140 countries. 
and they mainly design and manufacture connectors and sensors for a variety of different industries. So the job site is based in Fuquay, and I went into the job site um, Monday through Thursday. I had my own office space, and the lab was very organized, so everything that I needed to find was there, and it was efficient. Uh, my experience gained was the first of all, Creo, which is a 3D software ver um, where I could 3D model and stuff. Um, this was similar to Illustrator, which is something that I learned in school. And I also did PowerPoints and other things like Excel spreadsheets. My duties and responsibilities included a wide variety of things, the biggest of which was creating PowerPoints for upcoming meetings. Uh, these PowerPoints included pictures of the products that we made as well as measurements, and if we ran into any issues while testing, then I would include them in this so that our coworkers could be up to date. Um, how did it relate to school? Well, I learned a lot of skills in Excel and PowerPoint that helped me throughout my job because I had to do a lot of measurements and other things in Excel. Um, along with this, my drafting classes taught me the basics of 3D modeling, which I used a lot for Creo. Uh, Work-based learning. Because this was my first time being in an engineering-based job, I had a lot of questions, and my supervisors really worked as mentors to guide me throughout. Um, and I had a lot of questions, so I had to come out of my comfort zone and ask people you know, how to do projects. But this enabled me to learn a lot of communication skills and other engineering-based skills. Uh, along with this, my future plans um, aren't really certain right now. I did enjoy my time as an engineer, but I want to explore the world of finance and business uh, because this is another one of my passions. And before I do that, I can't really determine what I want to do. Uh, for my PBM project, I focused on solar panel cable management. Uh, my team and I designed a clip, as you can see here, that clips onto solar panel farms and helps keep the cables organized. So I got to improve my 3D modeling skills and teamwork skills throughout this. The purpose of this was to keep uh, the small wires that ran for hundreds of feet on solar panel farms uh, organized and in place. So this clip will attach to the main frame and keep the smaller ones from going all over the place. Uh, so this is an ease of use product. The middle design here is what I first came up with and 3D printed. And although it worked, it slid up and down the frame too easily. So me and my coworker remodeled it and the first sketch of what we decide to finish with is on the left there. That is what I wrote on the whiteboard. It's a side view, and you can see how we plan to attach it to the clip. So creating a new product at TE Connectivity is a slow and tedious task because uh, we had to get a pending patent and finalize the material. Right before I left my internship to come back to school for this year, I heard that it was given the green light to continue. So as we speak, people are making progress on it. And once this is finalized, it should become an official product for the company. And I hope to go back next year and continue working on it. I want to thank my supervisor and Ms. House for lending me this opportunity. I think I gained a lot of experience from it. And thank you guys for listening. Are there any questions? Hello everybody, my name is Addison Barber and I did an internship with Design Group over the summer. Now Design Group is a large company and they offer technology and engineering based services to their clients and their clients are also over other companies, so not just like individual people. And they offer, their clients are from a variety of in, like different fields, so they could come from pharmaceuticals, food and beverage, industrial, things like that. My supervisor was Adolfo, and then my mentors were Selena and John, and I'm very thankful for them for this experience. They were super kind and super generous with their time. An average workday for me started around nine in the morning and lasted till around four. So I was in the office most of my day, doing assignments, meeting with my supervisor and mentors, and just planning for the next week. And we would plan the whole week's next schedule on that Friday. So for my job site, I spent most of my time in the office in Raleigh. So during this time, I would either be working individually on assignments in a cubicle, or I would be in a conference room. In the conference room, it was more collaborative work, and I'd be working with my supervisor and mentors, brainstorming, getting constructive criticism, and things like that. And I did occasionally work from home. This was less, but it was for more finishing assignments that I was working on. 
I gained most of my experience in my project, which is called FMEA, which stands for Failure Mode and Effects Analysis, which is a long name. Essentially, it's where you have a product or a process, you break it down into a bunch of steps, and then based on these steps, you ask yourself what could go wrong. And based on this, you rank it based on criteria, which is severity, detectability, and occurrence. And the higher the number your failure mode has, which is what could go wrong, the more severe the consequences would be. So this is more of a safety measure, and it could be applied to a bunch of different things. And the main platform for FMEA was Microsoft Excel, which I had never used before, and I was wishing I had taken a class in. But I got better at it as I went along. And then also I gained more skills in communication and teamwork just by working with my mentors and supervisors. There were some similarities between class and my internship. We both had to have time management, so that could be physically showing up on time to the office or to school, or also just getting your assignments in on time. I also had to work with others. In class, it's more of small groups, but in this, it was more with other people in the company. I also used computers, so I had to have access to a computer my whole entire internship, and same with school. And there was homework, so I might come home and have to finish an assignment if there was a deadline, and same with school. There were some differences, obviously, in the people in the environment. It was a lot more professional at the internship. There was different etiquette, different dress code, but I did feel like I had more independence. I worked on a variety of assignments from the very beginning. I had a project proposal, and I ended with actually holding my FMEA which is where I had told everybody my steps and what I had learned and was actually able to present it to people. And my FMEA, like my project and my topic for it was actually a layered lemon cake, which is something we're all familiar with, so it made it easy to learn my steps. So I have visual aids on the screen right now, so I have a process flow diagram, and then I also have a cake schematic, and drafting definitely helped me make my schematic because of the dimensions and actually creating it. I did also get some work-based learning because FMEA is problem solving. So you need to be able to problem solve in a variety of different careers. And just those skills in general can be applied. FMEA is used in so many different fields. And I did get to sit on, on meetings and be in a professional environment, which is something I would not have gotten to do otherwise. I did see some flexibility in engineering careers. I'm still undecided on what I want to do, but I did like the flexibility because their clients meant that they didn't have to work a nine to five every day. It was more dependent on their client hours and what they needed. And I do like to be challenged and to solve problems, so I want to carry this forward. Th my final thing that proved to me that I had learned a lot during this internship was actually being able to present my FMEA to others. Because in the beginning, I didn't even know what it stood for, and by the end, I was able to actually give a presentation to others on it. So that was really cool for me. Thank you, and that's it. Hi, my name is Charlie Boddicker, and I completed an internship with Natrix over the summer of 2022. Now, you might be thinking, what is Natrix? Natrix is an environmental engineering firm located in Raleigh, North Carolina. They work on a multitude of different projects, including shoreline erosion, habitat restoration, satellite identification systems, and nutrient removal. Here is a picture of the office, and um, to the right are pictures of concrete structures that the company prints to help with shoreline erosion. Now, my time with Natrix. I spent majority of my time with Natrix 3D modeling different parts and complex machinery around the workspace. This is because the company is planning to grow and expand, so they need documentation of all of their um, parts and machines. I attended uh, meetings where I talked about my progress and how I was doing, and the company talked about how they conti can continue to grow and expand. I helped research and improve AI systems that the company is working on, which is their satellite identification systems. So for my environment, Natrix is located in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, it has a front of house and a back of house. The front of house is um, basically office spaces, which is where my office was located. Uh, it has meeting areas and pretty much everything that engineers need. The back of house is more of a warehouse style it has lots of complex machines, printers, and vehicles all in operation, printing and working. I gained lots of valuable experience from my internship. <coughs> this uh, reaffirmed my lifelong goal of becoming an engineer, and I wish to go to college for a four-year degree and become an engineer. <coughs> I learned a lot about uh, being an engineer, working with them, 
and what it's like to be in the engineering field itself. Now, how did school prepare me for my internship? School prepared me greatly for my internship because of classes that I took, such as Drafting 1 and Drafting 2. In Drafting 1, I became certified in Autodesk AutoCAD. In Drafting 2, I became certified in Autodesk Inventor. And Autodesk Inventor is actually the software that the company uses. So I came into my inter internship thoroughly prepared and ready to start drawing. Daily tasks for me included conducting experiments and attending meetings that I talked about earlier. And majority of my time was spent 3D modeling in Autodesk Inventor. And this is also what I did my project on. For my project, I tasked myself with completing four different 3D models of different parts and machinery around the workspace. The first one I created is of a box that, uh, that the company uses to hold their concrete mix. The way I created these drawings is I hand measured all the measurements that I needed and the angles. I then created a hand sketch of the drawing and then I created the drawing within Inventor. This is the second drawing I created and it is of a grate that the company uses to sift through their, their concrete mixture. While doing these drawings, I learned that every single drawing has a different challenge that I had to overcome. This one, for example, had lots of tricky angles and hard to reach complex uh, measurements that I had to, to reach to get to. This is the third drawing that I created and it is of the 3D printer itself. Natrix actually pl plans on using my drawings for manufacturing purposes in the future, which is very exciting. This is the fourth and final drawing that I created it's, uh, called the uh, house. It's basically machine that uh, shakes and sifts through the concrete mixture, leaving the final concrete uh, structure left. In the picture, there's a tarp over the frame, so it's kind of hard to see, but this is a the drawing of the frame. Thank you so much for coming to watch my presentation. Thank you to my parents for helping me through this process. Thank you to my internship coordinator, Ms. House. Thank you to my internship supervisor for making this all happen, Ma Matthew Campbell. Uh, hello, my name is Shane Connaughton. I'm in the Engineering Academy, and today I'll be telling you about my summer internship experience. I interned at a company called Burke Tech, and Burke Tech is a fiber optics company. And if you don't know what fiber optics are, they're cables that are typically used when someone wants to transmit large amounts of data over a certain distance. And for instance, most of the internet infrastructure is based around fiber optic cables, and Burke Tech is a company that manufactures these cables. So as for the job site, Burke Tech is actually split into two buildings, the main building there on the left and the secondary building there on the right. I was mainly situated in the main building on the left because it houses the main office spaces for the engineering teams, managerial teams, and the R&D teams, as well as the in-house factory that produces all of the fiber optic cables that Burke Tech sells. I also spent some time in the secondary building with the quality assurance team to make sure that the cables that Burke Tech was actually producing were up to standard. My supervisor while at Burke Tech was Karen Berry, who was the director of operations at the Fuquay plant, and my mentor was Joe Janish, who was the head of the engineering team and is the person I worked with the most. I actually gained a lot of experience from those two as I learned how it is to hold a real job, how real work environments are like, how coworkers interact and communicate with each other, and I also learned a whole lot about fiber. And in a, in a day in the life, I would usually arrive around 9 a.m. and begin either working on my project or assignments my mentor or supervisor gave me. If I were to work on my project, I would usually allot myself one to two hours so I can actually get to my assignments that my supervisor and mentor gave me, things such as statistical analysis of the cables, quality assurance, and splicing cable tests. And I actually used a lot of things that I learned from the classroom at my internship. For instance, my mentor, Joe, was the head of the engineering team, so I'd frequently sit in on his meetings with the engineering team when they were developing new cables, and I could recognize the steps of the engineering design process that they were using. And I also used and saw a lot of math that I learned in my math classes when I was doing my statistical analysis on the cables. And finally, I also used the troubleshooting process that I learned in my computer science class in dealing with the problem on the armor lines in the factory with my mentor. My internship experience hasn't changed my future career plans in any way. I still plan on getting either a biology degree or a biomedical degree from UNC Chapel or NC State, but it has cemented my desire to not have a job that requires me to sit behind a desk for most of the day. And 
Burke Tech has what's called product information sheets, or PI sheets for short. And these are a basic rundown of what the cable is meant for, and Burke Tech would send these to customers when they're going to buy these cables, so they know the basic specifications of the cables, things such as the diameter, weight, operating temperature, and what the cable is rated for. However, when I looked at the file holding all these PI sheets, I noticed that a lot of them were very old, such as the one here, which was last updated in June of 2004, which is before I was even born. And I asked my mentor if these could even be used, and he told me that they couldn't be, that all the data on them were, was likely incorrect, and that they would only update them when the sales team would put in a request for them to send to customers. And I found so my project was to figure out all of Burke Tech's most pro popular product families and update all the PI sheets within them. And to do this, I use a program called SAP as well as Microsoft Excel to retrieve all the data specifications. And then I use a graphics program called Corel Draw to update the cross-section graphic in the top right corner. And then after I had the new graphic and all the data specifications I needed, I would compile it all into a Microsoft Word document to make the finished PI sheet. And then I rinse and repeated that process around 100 times to get all of uh, Burke Tech's most popular product families PI sheets updated. And I'd like to thank you all for your time and attention, as well as my supervisor, Karen, and my mentor, Joe, for the amazing opportunity they gave me, and if you have any questions. Hi, everyone. My name is Owen Davis, and this summer I interned at NOAA Medical. NOAA Medical is a medical robotics company founded in 2018. There are now over 100 talented employees who are dedicated to creating medical devices that can treat detect diseases quickly and effectively. Some of these devices include the uh, single-use scope, a disposable bronchioscope, tilt technology, which scans for non-visual lesions, and the Galaxy system, which is the company's medical robotics platform. The company is located in San Carlos, California. However, my supervisor and I both were remote, worked remotely. Um, I, I met with my supervisor every day in person, but most of my work was completed at home. Um, uh, due to being remote, I had to use my company email, uh, Slack, and Google Meet to communicate with employees and attend meetings. My supervisor for this internship was Matt Penny. Matt is a staff engineer at NOAA Medical and has a, bio, and has a bachelor's degree in biomedical engineering. He was extremely influential in my internship because he provided me with tasks and guided me through them. I spent most of my time working one-on-one -on -one with Matt, working on projects for him. Another important individual in my internship was Enrique Romo. He is the VP of Research and Innovation at NOAA Medical. I ended up presenting my final project to him at the end of my internship. My day-to-day -day work consisted of various tasks, projects, and responsibilities. Some days I'd be asked to help sand down parts or assemble systems. Other days I'd be tasked with designing components. However, most of my efforts were diverted towards small projects, which would take me around a week or two to complete. An example of one of these projects is when I had to create a uh, crimp die and a uh, test fixture for it. The first step was designing both the parts. Then I got into contact with the manufacturer and sent them my designs. At the end of my internship, I completed a much larger project where I had to uh, design, prototype, and test uh, different techniques and tools for intubating uh, body lumens, such as the colon and esophagus. I used my prior knowledge of parametric design to design the tools. I also created a text fixture, which you can see on the right. Um, left, sorry. Uh, then I uh, began testing and collecting data through the test fixture. After I collected uh, some data, I started innovating upon my early designs and creating new ones. When I was done, I gathered all the information I could and created a presentation. I then presented my findings and my designs to Enrique Romo, my supervisor, and a couple other employees. The, uh, the uh, Engineering Academy has taught me uh, 3D design and uh, modeling, which has prepared me for this internship because uh, my day-to-day -day responsibilities included designing and creating components. The Engineering Academy also taught me great communication skills and punctuality. I had to be on time and complete my projects before deadlines, as well as be respectful when talking to other employees and my supervisor. I, throughout the internship, I gained so much uh, knowledge and experience in engineering, uh, especially in prototyping, testing, and design. 
However, the most important things I learned were decision-making skills and the ability to decide the next steps in a project. Um, sorry. Uh, my future plans have not changed. Um, I still want to attend NC State for biomedical engineering and become a uh, enter in the career field of medical robotics. Um, that being said, I'm very thankful for the opportunity to work for NOAA Medical, and uh, they my and uh, which is uh, which has influenced my desire to become an engineer. Thank you for your time and attention. Uh, any questions? Hello, my name is Bishop McGregor, and this is my pro my uh, presentation on my internship that I did this summer in which my project was designing a nine-hole golf course. So I did my internship at ePage Design, which is a user experience design firm, and my supervisor was the owner, Elena Page. I did my, um, my internship was, com was completely remote, so my daily duties consist of getting my project work done as well as attending various meetings. To do this, I started with four ideas of user experience, like outdoor experiences, and eventually came down to designing a nine-hole golf course. I used the, the design thinking process, uh, which is very similar to the engineering design process, which I've learned in school. I had to research, figure out why this was important, prototype, and test the design. I started off with research. This included things such as uh, how long a golf course usually is, like the holes, where it might be, and if this was to actually be made, like what sort of grasses they would use and stuff like that. So I figured out a location if this was actually going to be made. This is in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains in western North Carolina. And I had things such as how far it is from the airport, how much per acre it would be, and stuff. So a very important part of designing something is the customer. So I created a customer persona to figure out who the ideal customer would be, and it would feature things such as their needs, interests, frustrations, and how they would figure out about my product. After doing that, it was time to start the design. I started with hand drawings um, of the holes, like, and it featured stuff like where the sand would be, where the water would be, and the overall shape of the hole. Then I overlaid it onto the d where I the location, and fig and put it and colorized it to so you could see where the water, where the sand, where the green was, stuff like that. After doing that, I put it into uh, PGA 2K21's course designer to create my product. Here are a few of those holes. So, what did I learn? I learned that there's a lot of different things I can do in the engineering design field, as, as well as as well as um, that there are a bunch of different fields that I can go into. I don't know if I want to be an engineer after this, but it definitely was an experience that I enjoyed. And it related to school because my school classes that I had taken because things such as my drafting classes and the engineering process that I learned throughout them. I'd like to thank everybody that helped me and thank you guys for your attention. All right, that's the end of our internship presentations. Let's give all of our interns a round of applause. Great job. All right, thank you for coming.